Management of iris prolapse in a small eye with a dense white cataract. We have an elderly patient with a very small eye and a very dense white cataract. When we look at the axial length, we see it's less than 20 millimeters and the patient's very hyperopic. I want to show you that the clear corneal incision is very well constructed. We'll go ahead and use Tripan Blue to stain the anterior capsule and perform a capsulorexis. We're aiming for a sufficiently large capsulorexis of about 5 millimeters. This is not so simple because the eye is very small. We perform some gentle hydro dissection using balanced salt solution and a blunt 27 gauge cannula. We'll notice during the hydro dissection that the anterior chamber shallows and you see the blue capsule remnant flows out of the anterior chamber through the incision. At this point the intraocular pressure rises and the patient winces in discomfort as the iris prolapses. Simply pushing the iris back into the eye will not work. The eye is rock hard right now and the intraocular pressure is very high. The patient is quite uncomfortable. So what's going on here? We have a very dense cataract, a large cataract. We ended up performing a relatively small capsulorexis. When we performed the hydrodissection, balanced salt solution became trapped behind the nucleus and that pushed the nucleus anteriorly. This caused a very high intraocular pressure rise, which caused the nucleus to move further anteriorly and the iris prolapses out of the incision. The treatment of this is correcting the pressure gradient, rocking the nucleus to release this trapped balanced salt solution. As the balanced salt solution is released, the nucleus can now move posteriorly and the pressure is released. Now with a low pressure, the iris can be placed back into the anterior chamber and we can proceed with phaco. Let's watch this in action. Remember, just pushing the iris back into the anterior chamber is insufficient and will not work. Instead, what we're going to do is we'll release the trapped balanced salt solution by rocking the nucleus. Note that we're very lucky that we didn't blow out the posterior capsule during hydrodissection. That could have happened as well. As we release this trapped balanced salt solution, the pressure drops. And when the pressure drops, the nucleus moves posteriorly as the anterior chamber deepens. Notice we'll now check the pressure and the eye is relatively soft and the patient is quite comfortable. It's easy at this point to keep the iris within the eye. We'll go ahead and proceed with phaco emulsification. In this patient we're using relatively low power settings given the nature of her weak endothelium. Lots of phaco chop is required to mechanically disassemble the nucleus. You'll notice here the tough leathery feel of this nucleus, but still with time and patience and low power, we're able to remove the entire nucleus. We'll notice that this eye does not have much cortex. In fact, it has almost none. At the end of phaco, there are just epinuclear fragments that are present. Now with lens insertion, we're going to insert a large lens, 30 diopters. In addition, as we insert the IOL, we insert some viscoelastic in the eye. And this insertion of the lens in viscoelastic will cause a pressure increase. And what will happen with the pressure increase? The iris will prolapse. There it is again. And the treatment will be to release the trapped viscoelastic and equalize the pressure gradient. So for iris prolapse, first correct the pressure gradient. When you have the iris prolapsing like this out of the wound, remember, release the trapped balanced salt solution. Correct the pressure gradient imbalance. There you see the fluid being released. The pressure will go down and the iris will be reposited. Thank you for your time and consideration.